Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's quickly begin today's class. I hope guys you are aware of the live classes for RBS Abian Award and this is the timetable for that. You can check out your classes uh, for the respective subjects. And this is our mobile application. One of the many, I would say, peculiar features that are there on this application is the past year papers availability. Many a times it is very hard to find the past years of RBS Abian Award exams or you can say UPSC and UGC may it need difficulty nahi hoti hai when you go for the past years but in RBS have been about because these uh, past years are memory based past years so reliability bhi maha pe aajati hai and secondly availability is also a very big concern now both of these concerns are catered to by our application so download it check out on the past years and many more new features okay so let's discuss the first question of the day that is which state has launched Amalan um, Anemia Mukt Lakshya Abhiyan in the state and approach to reduce anemia among the targeted groups? So here the right answer is Odisha. Now guys, before discussing the campaign, let's first know the two most important people of the state of Odisha. First is the CM of course, that is Naveen Patnayak and second is the governor which is Ganesh Lal. Okay, so these two names are important, do remember. Now, what is the campaign? <clears throat> From the name itself or the full form, you can say Anemia Mukt Lakshya Abhiyan. So, the campaign aims to eliminate the problem of anemia in the state, but there are certain groups which are targeted. For example, pregnant women, children, lactating mothers. These are some of the groups which are ta uh, targeted by this Abhiyan of the Odisha government, okay? So here you can clearly see pregnant women, lactating mothers, women of reproductive age, adolescents and children. So men of reproductive age are excluded apart from that. Everyone is included into this targeted group list. <coughs> okay, it will focus on Strengthening the iron and folic acid supplementation. Obviously, this is one of the most, I would say, lacking substance in the blood which causes anemia. Then we have testing for hemoglobin, treatment of anemic cases, capacity building of service providers, the people who are catering to the people surviving the anemia disease. Then social behavior change communication is going to be a part of this campaign. Okay. Now your question I guess is whether you have to remember all these pointers or not. So in my opinion, you don't have to remember these pointers because it's a state specific campaign and a scheme. Okay. So don't try to remember these pointers as well as these pointers. Okay. This is just for your information. Now the campaign aims to achieve the anemia mukt Odisha. Like we have the anemia mukt Bharat Abhyan. Similarly, the Odisha government has launched its Anemia Mukt Odisha Abhyan. Now we are discussing about Odisha. So there are certain things that I wanted to highlight. CM is Naveen Patnaik, Ganesh Lal is the governor. I'm again repeating, remember the names. Now, here we have the Abdul Kalam Island. I, yesterday, I guess I told you, not yesterday, in the last video, I told you that India has three major sites from where India launches its rockets and missiles. First is this APJ Abdul Kalam Island in Odisha. Second is Thiruvananthapuram. And third one is Andhra Pradesh, Sri Harikota Island. Okay. So this is one of those sites and that belongs to Odisha. That is one fact. And recently, Agni 3 intercontinental ballistic missile, which is capable of carrying nuclear warheads, was tested from this island. So do remember that fact as well. This was tested from this island very recently. The next fact about Odisha is this Chilika Lake. I hope you must have heard about it many a times. So this Chilika Lake is India's largest lagoon and the world's largest brackish water lagoon. So I hope you remember that there are three types of water categories. Fresh water body, 
brackish water body and saline water body okay there is a difference between all these three water bodies based on the quantity of salinity or the salt that is found in all these bodies okay now what is that quantity this is your task find it out because this is a part of your general awareness and you should be aware of it even if the examiner is not asking you this question but you should be prepared for answering such a question if in case it is there in the examination, kya pata examiner ka dimaag kab ghoom jaya aur kab is tarikhe ke questions wo banana shukun karte. Because we have seen that now the exam is going from particular to general. Okay. Coming back to this, I have already told you the world's largest brackish water lagoon and India's uh, largest lagoon. And what is a lagoon? Let me tell you that as well. So guys, look at the lagoon. Lagoon is a water body that is enclosed by the land but is connected with the sea through a narrow channel like this Chilika lake is connected. Okay, so that is a lagoon. <coughs> now, question number two. Where will India's first private agricultural mandi be set up? So here, guys, Nashik um, or Nastik is the right answer. So recently, Sahayadri Farmer Producer Organization, which is a company, it has become the first company in India to receive the license to set up this agriculture mandi. And this mandi, since it is being set up by a private company, so it is India's first private agriculture cultural mandi. Okay. Now, where will it be set up? So it will be set up in Dindori Nashik. Okay. Now it is going to take three years for this Monday to be completed, but it's just that the news is out now because it has received the license to set up this agriculture Monday. So let's have a look at the facilities which this Monday will have. Obviously that you don't have to remember those pointers, but still you should be aware of the facilities or the, uh, I would say features that an agriculture Monday provides to the farmers. <clears throat> so first is, that this Monday is going to be uh, of 100 acres. It will have a dedicated market space integrated with the world-class infrastructure, including the services from banking to storage. Okay, so storage ka bhi achha khasa, uh, services hongi. <clears throat> then we have processing, packaging, everything option under one roof for the farmers. So it is going to be a really go-to place for the farms. Okay, so that is that. And we don't have to go into another detail. Okay. Now, guys, my question from all of you is that we have E agriculture, national agriculture market, right? The portal of it. You have to tell me when was this portal launched. <clears throat> question number three. With which country has India conducted the eighth edition of the Garud Shakti exercise? So here, guys. Indonesia is the right answer. Now, before discussing anything from this news, I want to ask a question from all of you. And my question is that tell me the name of the other exercises that India conducts with Indonesia. Okay, this is my question from all of you. Now, let's discuss the news. So, 8th edition of this Garud Shakti exercise was conducted and it is a special force exercise okay so special forces like para commanders and these special troops are deployed for this exercise and recently it has taken place in indonesia and the exact location is sanga bona training area now let me show you where is it so guys it is here on the java eye so now since we are on the maps why not discuss about the territory of indonesia a little bit from the exams perspective so before telling you the locations, first let me tell you that the capital of Indonesia is Jakarta, which is near here. Okay, so this is Jakarta. And Rupiah is the currency of Indonesia. Okay, so I hope these two facts you will remember. Now this is the Sumatra island. From Sumatra and Singapore, in between both of these islands or the locations, we have the Malacca Strait. So this is Sumatra Island. This is your Java Island. 
this is the bali island and this is the borneo island so guys these are the four major islands of indonesia however indonesia in itself is an archipelago of different islands and it is world's largest muslim country as well so that is also a fact related to indonesia that you all should be aware of. okay i hope that islands are clear the capital's location is clear everything is clear by now now one more thing that i want to highlight that i hope you must have heard about challengers deep which is the earth's deepest point okay pacific ocean marina trench challengers deep i hope you have heard about it okay so challengers deep is the deepest point on earth in marina trench in the pacific ocean similarly every ocean has its deepest point and in the indian ocean's deepest point is the sunda trench okay or the java trench so it is here okay sunda trench which is the deepest point of the indian ocean okay so that was all about indonesia which i found important one more thing that this is the borneo island of indonesia <clears throat> here you have indonesia this is malaysia and this is brunei brunei darussalam and this is the only country which is entirely based on the borneo island so these were your general awareness facts and all these countries make up your asia nations on that note tell me which is the 11th member of asia this is your task one more fact that i want to discuss about the indonesia is this place bandung so bandung is the city where in 1955 Okay, so there was a conference of Asian leaders and African leaders and this conference paved the way for the establishment of non-aligned movement which was pioneered by our Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay, so this non-aligned movement was essentially for not parting with any one of the sides, either US or Russia. So that's the basic premise. In 1961, it was established, but the declaration or you can say the seeds of this movement or organization was laid in this 1955 Bandung conference itself okay so that is why it is important and I hope you will remember these points and here you can see Jakarta what else is remaining I guess I have taught you everything so here we have greater Sunda islands and this is the Borneo island which I wanted to discuss with you here in this slide. So Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. I guess there was a question in one of the government exams like UPSC or SSC. I don't remember which examination was it but there was a question that which country is entirely based on the Borneo island. So the answer of that question was Bor Brunei Darussalam. Okay. Moving ahead question number four. Which edition of the um, Naseem Al Bahar 2022 exercise was conducted by India and Oman? Obviously, I have already told you that editions are important. So now we have the edition. 13th edition was organized, and the location was the coast of Oman. And remember that this is a naval exercise. So here we have Oman. Some days back, we discussed about the GCC, that is Gulf Cooperation Council. So let's just remind our facts. So GCC is a group of six Gulf countries, oil producing Gulf countries, Oman, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. So these are the six countries which are part of the GCC and Iran on which this entire Gulf is named after. It is not a member of it. Now related to Iran, we have Chabahar port here through which India is planning to go into the Central Asia uh, skipping this route of Pakistan which we use at present to supply any goods to Afghanistan as we did in the case of supplying wheat okay so that is uh, the fact the next question which bank has launched India's first sticker based debit card called first tap Nam mehi first tap so, which bank could it be? It is IDFC First Bank. Now, the location of this bank and the current chief of this bank, these two are your questions. Mention it in the comment section below. Okay, so what has happened recently? 
This bank, in partnership with NPCI, has launched the first sticker-based debit card. Okay, let me first show you the debit card. So this is, guys, your debit card, and it is the sticker-based debit card, and it basically aims to enable the contactless payment. Now, how will it happen? Suppose there is this device which reads the radio frequency. Okay. As and when this card will come in contact with this machine. Now, this is an example which I am giving you. Just don't take this kind of a machine seriously because uh, machines are of different shapes. This is just an example to make you understand the concept. Okay, so suppose when this card will come in contact with this machine, this machine will read its content and will make the transaction happen. Okay, so this is how the near field communication works. Okay, when you come in contact with the uh, machine, it starts reading your card and whatever is the device, be it the wearable device or anything, it reads it and then it uh, basically conducts the transaction. Okay, obviously, with your permission, otherwise it would be a hacking. Okay, so such kinds of devices are very vulnerable to hacking and unethical cyber uses so we have to use our products very carefully now coming back to the news so this card will facilitate transactions by simply tapping the st sticker on a near field communication enabled point of sale terminal okay so here now you just don't have to touch the point of sale terminal as well you are going to just tap on your card and the transaction will happen after your permission Question number six, who has won the National Gopal Ratna Awards 2022 in the category of Best Dairy Farmer Rearing Indigenous Cattle Buffalo Breeds? So Jitendra Singh here is the right answer. It is not the minister. It's a normal person, but the name is Jitendra Singh. Now, what is it? The news is that the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying has announced the National Gopal Ratna Awards 2022. Now, first, let me tell you the significance of this award. So, in the dairying sector, this award is of the top-notch importance in India. So, it has the highest level of importance. Now, this award is given in three categories, and for all the three categories, for all the three ranks, first rank, second rank, and third rank, we have the different price ranges. Okay, for first ranker, rupees five lakh is given as a prize. For second ranker, 3 lakh is given as a price. For third ranker, 2 lakh is given as a price. Okay. Now, here are the three categories. What I have done here is that I have only put the first ranker in the table. Second and third rankers are not at all important, guys. They are not going to be asked. So, let's discuss the three categories and their winners. First is best dairy farmer rearing indigenous cattle buffalo breeds. This is the category. Now, in this category, Jitender Singh from Fatahabad, Haryana has won the award. Even if you are not able to remember the location, it is absolutely fine. Just remember the name of the person. Then, Best Artificial Insemination Technician. This award has been given to Gopal Rana uh, from Odisha. Then, Best uh, Dairy Cooperative Society or Milk Producer Company or Dairy Farmer Producer Organization. And in my opinion, this question is a very important question. Uh, this category is important. So, Manathavadi, Shira, Shirol Padaka, Sahakarana, Sangam Limited from Kerala. Okay, Vayanad, Kerala. Kuch zada hi Sanskrit type naam hai, but still, we have to remember this name. Okay, Manathavadi. Shirol Padka. Bas itna hi yaad rakh lo. Iske aage yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai. Just remember that it is in Kerala because we are talking about a society. A, a cooperative society. So it's very important that you know the location where it operates. Now here I have just told you the importance of the Na National Gopal Ratna Award. To recognize and uh, encourage all the individuals like the farmer rearing indigenous animals etc etc who are working in these fields in order to recognize such people and organizations, the National Gopal Ratna Awards are given. 
Now here I have one more important fact for all of you and that is the Rashtriya Gokul Mission. I hope you have heard about this mission. It is a very important mission and please cover it from your exam perspective. Okay. Now this mission was launched in 2014 under the National Program for Bovine Breeding and Dairy Development. Okay. So we are discussing about the animals only so i just remember that recently prime minister narendra modi had also announced to develop a vaccine for the foot and mouth disease which is there in the bovine in the cattle specifically and recently we have seen an epidemic of th this disease in cattle in the in india basically so we are going to soon develop a vaccine as well for that specific disease Question number seven, who has won the JCB prize for literature 2022? So here Khalid Javed and Baran Faruqi, both of them are the winners of this prize. So option D is the right answer. Now, ja Khalid Javed and Baran Faruqi, both of them are going to get this award for one single book. So Khalid Javed is the writer of the book, whereas Baran uh, Faruqi is the translator of the book. So this book is the paradise of food, which was written in Urdu, then translated in English by Baran Faruqi. So both of them have received the award. Now guys, this JCB Prize for Literature is the Indian Literary Award, which was established in 2018. Now, obviously, you don't have to remember the year of establishment of the awards. But you should be aware of the country which gives this award, JCB Prize. Okay, it may appear foreign, but it is given by India only. One more fact here is that this award is given to an Indian work, uh, which is a work of fiction by an Indian writer in English or translated fiction in English. Okay, so primarily the focus language is English, as we have seen in the in this book as well, the Paradise of Food originally written in Urdu but then translated in English. So this literature prize is given to the uh, books either written in English or translated in English. Okay, The prize is 25 lakh in all. Therefore, the writer has got 25 lakhs and the translator has got an additional 10 lakh rupees. Obviously, this fact is also not important for you to remember. It's just again for your understanding that how the prize is given and what is the mechanism of the prize. Okay. Sometimes the overall understanding of the news also help us in retaining the facts. Okay, so question number eight is who has won the <coughs> French National Award 2022? So here, Payal S. Kanwar has won this award. Now this award is given by first of all France. Okay, this is the French National Award. And it has been given to Payal S. Kanwar, who is the Director General of Indo-French Chamber of Commerce for her work to boost the bilateral ties. So that is the basic idea. And Kanwar joined this chamber in 2011. That is an additional information. Question number nine is, who is the recipient of the Dr. Abdul Kalam Seva Puraska? So here... <coughs> Ravi Kumar Sagar, guys, is the right answer. So, he is Ravi Kumar Sagar, one of the youngest entrepreneurs in India. And he has won this Abdul Kalam Seva Puraskar for his service to the society. Okay. Now, what kind of services did he give to the society? That's not our matter of concern as of now. Now, coming back to the news. So, he is the founder and CEO of RK's Inno Group. Okay. So, do remember this as well this can be asked in the examination because he has received a very prestigious award okay now this award is given first of all uh, by the vande bharat foundation and lead india foundation to commemorate the birth anniversary of apj abdul kalam which is on october 15 and on the birth anniversary of kalam we celebrate the world students day as well okay so do remember this as well now, there is an interesting fact that I want to share with you. So, APJ Abdul Kalam visited Switzerland once and the day on which he visited Switzerland, that day is celebrated as Science Day in that country. How amazing that this fact is. Now, coming back to this news, 
द अवार्ड वॉज प्रेजेंटेड टू हिम फॉर हिज सर्विस टू द सोसाइटी ओके सो दैट इज इट वी डोंट नीड टू गो इन टू टू मच ऑफ इट्स डिटेल्स ना हियर गाइज आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन वॉट वॉज द थीम ऑफ द वर्ल्ड स्टूडेंट्स डे इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू टेल मी द आंसर The last question is who has been awarded the 2022 Champions of the Earth award from India so here the right answer is Purnima Devi Barman so first of all the Champions of the Earth 2022 is basically an award given by the United Nations Environment Program now this program is based in Nairobi it has its headquarters in Nairobi Kenya do remember okay now why are these champions of the earth award given very easy for, uh, to understand from its name itself that is for encouraging the people who have done service to the earth or to the environment now who are the winners so guys here we have a total of five winners in different categories and from india we have purnima devi barman from entrepreneurial vision category okay so this is her category in which she has been chosen as a champion of the earth okay now here we have other people as well so your answer your question would be that whether you have to remember all these people so guys if your examination is near again my answer is static if your examination is in the next month then only try to memorize these names otherwise no need to memorize such kind of uh, names okay um the maximum i have seen which has been asked in the examination is again from this news only from the champions of the earth only that who has won this award from india so that's the maximum extent to which the examiner goes as far as this award is concerned so why we want to go beyond that so just remember india's so here guys this video ends i hope you have enjoyed the video and uh, one last thing that i want to discuss with you guys please provide your feedbacks below in the comment section or you can also provide us your feedback feedbacks on the whatsapp group with this number okay be it the positive be it the negative feedback is a feedback so provide your feedback to us so that we can understand where are we lacking what are our strengths so that we can strengthen our strengths and work on our weaknesses so this is your task to help us improve provide us your feedbacks here or you can also provide the feedbacks on the comment section and the feedback is not necessarily restricted to my videos you can give us the feedback for the entire course for our entire youtube channel or a specific mentor of our channel you can do that but you have to do that okay so goodbye stay healthy keep learning and a happy healthy life to all of you goodbye guys